Hey, welcome to Hard Science, a show where we use just a little bit of knowledge about the world to bend it to our whim. I'm Anthony. I'm Tara. I used to play with cardboard boxes when I was a kid in the most dangerous ways. We used to pretend they were cars or sleds. There was one where you would get in and the other kids would tape you into the closed box and roll it down a hill and we would call it rocket ship. That sounds completely safe. Now that we're adults, can cardboard boxes be used to make viable vehicles? Yes. Not by us, but by smarter people, people who yes. build things all the time, like our friends Pat and Michael. One end is gonna be like this and the other is gonna be like this? Yeah. How would we make it look more like a boat? Are you okay with a one layer board? Boat. What do you lose by losing half the half the cardboard density? Probably about half the chance of it sinking. <laughs> <laughs> to build two cardboard boats, we're going to need four five by ten pieces of corrugated cardboard, along with some gorilla tape, some liquid nails, and some wood glue, and two cardboard tubes. One of us could be in one, and the other person could be in the other. Yeah, I call this meters. one. So you think about these large ships that have metal hulls, and you're wondering how do these metal hulls float? And it's because inside the hull is filled with air, which is lighter than the water outside of the ship. If you were to fill the ship with water, then the weight of the ship and the water combined would be more than the weight of the water displaced, causing it to sink. You want me to fake paddle? I just want to make sure your arms will actually clear the sides. Oh yeah. The cardboard we're using for our boats today is rated to withstand up to 275 pounds of pressure per square inch before it punctures or crushes. That's not really going to be our problem, though. Our problem is going to be the pressure of the water itself pushing in on the structure of the boat. What matters is whether or not it floats. Those look like very precise measurements, though, and Pat's just kind of like... One cubic foot holds about 62 pounds of water, and we've measured our boats to have a volume of a little over 15 cubic feet, which means that they can hold almost 1,000 pounds of water. So technically, as long as we weigh less than that, they should float. I had a big breakfast this morning, so I'm a little worried, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like if we can get across once, we know these things are okay, right? Oh, this is already sinking. Battle, battle. Oh my god, it's working! Go, Galactica! Tara, you gotta quit. taking on water in the back. We made it back before you guys did. No, we took you one more ladder. The black is going stay out here all day. about how that went. I feel really wet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, things we learned. Our flat bottom boat was definitely Very stable. But what I did notice with your wedge shaped boat is it, it definitely glided easier mm -hmm. through the water. All in all, I think a very successful first cardboard regatta. Yeah, would do again. <laughs> would <laughs> uh, and sink you, again. And if you guys want to know how to make one of these for yourselves, uh, go check out their episode of Die Tryin'. YouTube.com slash Die Tryin' or Die Tryin.com. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take our, our boat ideas, we're going to template them out in cardboard. Son of a bitch, I didn't even notice. Get in the pool, Pat! Or get me a towel, at least! Take a beer if you're out. <laughs> and a snack. 